Hey guys, welcome to the first episode of me doing stuff on clay. Um, so to give you an idea of what this video is going to look like, I've got a specific scenario here and what the purpose of this entire series is going to be is utilizing clay to show you how we can take specific scenarios for B2B companies that have maybe complex solutions or complex um, lead sources or, you know, complex prospecting needs and how we can utilize clay in order to do that in a more efficient manner without requiring hiring more people. So what I'm going to do in each of these episodes is to give you a sort of overview of the specific details of the scenario and then I'm going to walk you through the clay table and show you my thinking behind it in the hopes that you can take some value from that um, and utilize it for your own needs or whatever you'd like to do with it but just getting an idea behind the thinking of it so it may not be fully relevant to you in terms of this specific table but i want to give you an idea of my thinking behind it okay and then how you can apply that thinking to your own situation so to give you sort of specific details of these scenarios by the way these scenarios i just got ChatGPT to make them up for me um, I was like, give me complex solution, give me complex situations in which I can use clay to solve for. Okay, so if you have a specific scenario yourself that you need solved, then send me a message, let me know, write a comment, um, and I can see if I can make an, an episode on that of, of solving it. You know, the more complex, the better, because then we can really show how powerful this tool is. So to give you specific details of this scenario what we're gonna be pretending that we are. We're gonna pretend that we're a company that operates within the construction industry focusing on projects that involve green building materials, okay? So our clients, the clients that we're trying to reach out for, solve for, are construction firms or architecture firms in building projects that must meet certain environmental standards such as these initiatives. Now, it doesn't really matter what these initiatives are, you don't need to know them specifically, but um, from my research, these are initiatives and certificates that are given to construction projects um, based upon hitting certain environmental quotas or certain you know qualifications okay so within the geographic focus just to give you some more detail this is the geographic focus of the supplier themselves is on the north american market with specific emphasis on urban areas known for stringent building regulations that favor green construction such as san francisco new york city and vancouver okay we chose specifically for this example new york okay um, and yeah, so they face challenges such as keeping up with updated evolving green regulations. So the pain point of the people that we're solving is that they're dealing with these very specific uh, regulations and certifications that they have to meet the standards of in order pr to proceed. OK, so what I'm going to show you is the table and then my thinking behind it. So here's the table right here. Let me make my face a little bit smaller and I'll walk you through it one by one. The way that I see and the philosophy that I see uh, clay tables as is a... Um, almost like a construction line or a production line. Like imagine how Ford originally created his Model T cars, okay, in a construction line. We start here, we move along, and by the end of it, we've got a full vehicle. So this is exactly what we're doing here. Now, the first problem that we needed to solve for was how do we get trigger-based information and leads based upon our specific situation now we're not going to be able to do that through linkedin sales navigator or scraping zoom info we're going to need live data okay showing us and telling us specific projects that have been announced or you know that, that, that have been I, I, announced as i said um, by the specific jurisdiction in which we're reaching out to so for this one here we chose new york so i found this website called new york yimby and basically they release articles whenever a new construction project um, is being announced or construction has been beginning or permits have been filed or whether there's a lottery or something like that so we've got a lot of different information here but we have a lot of relevant information. And what's fantastic is they have an RSS feed. So I just took this RSS feed and then I plugged this straight into Clay to pull RSS feed items. So what this does is that every time a new article is released, or for this one specifically, um, we have it set up to refresh 
in a day, so every day, but we can edit this to change you know, in the morning or the evening. Once a day is absolutely fine. We could also do it as it comes as well, so we can have really, really hot data. So whenever articles are released here, um, this will then move into Clay and we'll have the link to the article, we'll have the title of the article here and then we'll have the content snippet. So this will tell us some information about the actual project. Now, if we read these titles here, not every single project is gonna be relevant to us, not every single article. So we need, to, we need to read this information quickly and understand is this about a construction, pro is this about a specific production, uh, so a construction project that's going on. So you can see, for example, here, housing lottery launches or um, secures refinancing, okay? So neither of these are relevant to us. So what I did was I then used a um, Clagent GPT, um, and it cr I created a prompt that was based upon that and I asked it to look at the link so go to the link go to the website for the link so actually read the article um, read the article title and then look at the content snippet as well so we've got three different sources there and then determine whether this article is about a construction project that has been built yet or has just been approved for construction because that then qualifies them as relevant to us everything else is not relevant okay and then if the output if it is then output yes if it is not then output no and what this does is very quickly qualifies these articles based on our specific criteria that we're looking for. So you can see here that we have two that are relevant for us. Now, the next thing that we need to do is we then need to work out who the construction company is or who the relevant company is that has jurisdiction over this specific project. So again, we used a, um, a specific prompt here. So again, I got it to look at the website, look at the title of the article and look at the content snippet and then determine the name of the company responsible for construction. And again, I want it specifically to only output the name of the company responsible for construction. I don't need anything else. I don't need any other data. You have to be very specific with these prompts and tell it exactly what information you want. And you can see here that we've now got two names of the construction companies that are relevant to this specific project, which is fantastic. The next thing that we did was we used a um, one of uh, Clay's enrichments, which is the domain finder, which is really cool. This is literally a free um, a free thing, so it doesn't cost us any credits. And alongside this as well, so these these GPT prompts. Um, what's cool about it is that you can connect up your own Open AI key. So instead of using Clay's credits, which can be quite expensive if you're doing it for every single one, you can connect it up to your own API key. And you can actually see the total cost of running this. So um, this one as a cost is 0 0.002 cent per um, per result. So it's incredibly cheap to get this data and get this data fast. And again, imagine how long it would take for an individual person to look through these articles to then determine whether it is about a specific construction project and then to read those articles manually and find the actual company itself. It's gonna take long and I'm assuming it's a lot more expensive to do that. Now, what we did was got it to get the domain name of this specific company because the specific company name is not that useful to us unless we have the domain name. From the domain name, we then enriched the company with LinkedIn. So we found the company on LinkedIn and all of the relevant information about that. And let me just go back. Can show you that specifically it's been a little bit laggy on me so bear with me please okay so now we can see things like employee count we can see the name we can see their direct URL there as well and um, we can see what category they're in in terms of the size of the company we can see what industry they're in you know hopefully they're in architecture and planning and uh, we can see the description of the company as well the URL for their specific LinkedIn and then you know what kind of company is it? Is it a privately held company is it a public company it gives you an idea as well of the size of the company and the scale of the company and then the exact location of those com of that company as well so where are they based what country and then specifically what cities in New York New Jersey we can see right there um, what's cool about this as well in the way that I've set this up is that um, it will only run to the next part if it meets specific criteria um, so if I just go back I can show you that cool so you can see here that now we've got just these two examples so we're only running this specific prompt here in this specific enrichment when the condition is yes we don't really care about what it is if these are no we don't need to know that we only care if it's specifically yes so this is the same for every single um, enrichment we have following this it has to be yes to the previous step 
okay? So we can see relevant information there, which is really cool. And then from here, what we can then do is we can find relevant contacts within that company itself. So we can then search that up based upon job titles. Now, I'm not an expert or I don't have any experience in the construction world, but this is from my own research. These are some job titles that would be relevant within this company for us to reach out to if I was generating construction materials in the green space okay now you know working with clients obviously we get a lot more information from them but I just wanted to give you an idea of my thinking behind it okay so we're looking for things like principal architect partner project architect etc etc um, you can add a lot more different qualifications down here as well so how long have they been in the role um, their location where they are not based and um, keywords in their headlines about keywords which is cool and um, so we can see specific experiences of these people as well um, but again, not everyone has a full LinkedIn profile, so just be careful with that as well. So you can see that it's pulled a number of different uh, people within this search here. We've got four profiles with this. Th this one here, we've got one profile. Um, and again, you can see we've got their full name, we've got their first name, they've got their last name. We've got their URL to their LinkedIn profile, where they're actually based their titles and all the other relevant information that we need to know about them. From here, we then go to find an actual email. Um, I only use find email for this one because find email is the provider that I use, but you can do a waterfall enrichment. So for example, here where we haven't found an email, there may be a number of other providers where we will find the email, but I didn't want to use too many credits on this. Um, and by connecting up the find email API, that doesn't cost me a credit. So you can see here that we now have an email for that specific person at that specific project. Now this is where it becomes really, really cool. So as we mentioned in the um, sort of summary of what we're actually trying to do, we need to establish construction projects that are meeting or not meeting certain energy um, and sustainability awards, okay? So these were the Energy Star, the Lead, and the Bream, okay? So these are the ones that I specifically found. Now, again, I am no construction expert, so please take this with a, a pinch of salt. I want you to see this as an exercise in um, in testing out the capabilities instead of a specific example. If you're a construction guy and you're watching this thinking, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about, then that's because I don't know what I'm talking about specifically to do with construction. But from my own research, these are the three awards that are relevant um, to a construction company building a construction project within New York City, okay? So if they match these things, then that's great. If not, then they need to actually go ahead and get those awards. So what again, as I've asked it to do is to use all of the information that we've collected and then do a Google search as well. Um, using all of this information, so the article link, article title, the content snippet, the architect name, and um, so the name of the company and the website, and then determine if this specific construction project has been awarded this specific sustainability and environmental initiative. And then I've named it right there. And then I said, if there's no record of this out, uh, award, then I'll put no. If there is a record of this output, uh, of this award then I'll put yes okay so then we can see specifically have they been awarded this now this is super super powerful again imagine how long it would take an individual person to search up all the records to do all the googling to find this information we can find this information in the space of seconds and for a very very cheap price no point no 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 one seven so again tiny amounts of money in order to get this information so as you can see, none of these projects here have been awarded any of these things. So this could either be a positive thing or a negative thing. If it's no, then it's great because you could come in and say, okay, well, these guys have this specific pain point. So this is a pain point. They need to meet these in order to not receive fines from the you know from the the local government or to get funding or something along those lines. So these are pain points um, that you can then utilize in cold outreach. Okay. And then what I've done as well is I created a scoring system here as well. So this is kind of arbitrary the way I've set it up, um, but for a specific company that knows their ICP and knows exactly what they're looking for, then you can set this up a lot better. But I just wanted to show you this as an example of what you could do. So I set up six different scoring criteria. So employee count, um, the locality of the firm itself, um, the title of the person that we've actually found, and then based upon the results of these three right here. So if it's no, then we increase the score, okay? So because it's a pain point, so that means that it's a higher quality lead. So the higher the actual score, the better that lead is. So eight is the maximum. So we can see here that based on the criteria that I've set up, that this is a really hot lead. Then what I did was I created a formula that was based upon different parameters within the lead itself, um, within the score itself. 
So you can see if it's above seven, then it's going to be a hot lead. If it's um, more than four, but less than six, I think it was, then it's a warm lead and anything below four is then a cold lead. So we can see super quickly if this is a hot lead. So what's awesome about this is that this is automatic. So once we've set this up, we can get it to run every single day. And then every day you can have warm leads, hot leads, directly identified super, super quickly. And from here as well, you can then pass this directly into, you know, let's say that you wanna send it to your CRM. Um, we could then export this entry to HubSpot, to Salesforce, to Pipedrive, to Close, to various different ones. We can send it by webhook if you don't use any of these, but the key ones here are in here, so we can send this directly to that. If you then wanted to outreach them straight away as well, we could absolutely do that. So if you learn email sequences, we can then go export entry. We could add this to a campaign in Smart Lead. We could add it to a campaign in instantly, um, you know, in outreach.io or customer or whatever it is. I personally use instantly, but I know a lot of people use Smart Lead and Lemlist. So we can do that. We can send this straight to that um, that email service provider and then instantly reach out to them, which is really, really cool. But yeah, I just wanted to show you this as a specific example. This is episode one. I'm hoping as the episodes move forward um, and in the different examples that I show you, these will get better and better. But yeah, I just wanted to show you how powerful Clay is. I will leave the link to this table specifically below um, in the description. Um, so you can check that out. You can make you can make a copy of it, make amendments to it, whatever you like. Um, and yeah, let me know your thoughts. Let me know how you would do this. And uh, if you have a specific scenario you'd like to see me build out within clay then let me know and we can go from there cheers